question one. So here we've got a Venn diagram question. So we've got all of the numbers between 1 and 31 that we're going to have to place on our Venn diagram. So we've got two groups, two circles. One's called A and one's called B. So A has got the numbers 2, 4, 8, 14, 18, 22 and 28 in it. B has got 8, 10, 16, 18, 22 and 30 in it. So we're going to complete the Venn diagram. So in the middle, in the intersection, are the numbers in A and B. So they've both got an 8. They've both got an 18. And they've both got a 22. So what else has A got in it? A's got 2, 4, 14 and 28. And B has got 10, 16 and 30. So we're supposed to have all the even numbers between 1 and 31. So anything not in A and not in B is going to go on the outside. So we've got 2 and 4. We need 6. We've got 8, 10. So we need 12. 14, 16, 18, we need 20, we've got 22, we don't have 24, we don't have 26, and we've got 28 and 30, and then we'd be over 31. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15 numbers, there are 15 even numbers between 1 and 31, so we know we've got all of them. A number is chosen at random from the set, so from all the numbers. What's the probability that the number will be in the union of A and B? So the union of A and B means anything in A and anything in B. So all of these numbers are in the union of A and B because they're in A. And all of these numbers are in the union of A and B because they're in B. So how many numbers have we got here? We've got 10 numbers in the union out of 15 in total. So the probability is 10 out of 15. We don't need to simplify our answer. We can, it's two thirds. We don't have to. So we can leave it as 10 fifteenths. Question two. The frequency table shows the time taken for 100 people to travel to an event. And part A, so we've got all the information in the table. Part A says, find the percentage of people that traveled more than 30 minutes to the event. So how many people traveled for more than 30 minutes? We've got 29 plus 12 plus six. So 29 plus 12 plus 6 is 47. So it's 47 out of 100 people, which is 47%. So percent is out of 100. So 47 out of 100 is 47%. Part B draw a frequency polygon for the information on the table. So a frequency polygon is the midpoint plotted against the frequency. So the middle of 0 and 10 is 5, middle of 10 and 20 is 15, and so on. So we're going to plot 5 against 14. Fifteen against sixteen, twenty five, twenty three, thirty five, twenty nine, forty five, twelve, and 
and 55 6. And we're going to join these up with a ruler. And there's our frequency polygon. Question 3. Part A, find the reciprocal of 8. Reciprocal means 1 over. So it's 1 over 8. Reciprocal can also mean the power of minus 1, which again gives us 1 eighth. Part B, use your calculator to work out 2 cos 40 plus 3 sine 25 cubed. So we don't put the degree signs in the calculator. Instead, we're going to have a bracket around each of the angles. So it looks like that in the calculator. So let's type this in. So we're going to open the first bracket. Then 2 cos, the bracket opens automatically. 40, and we'll close the bracket around the angle. Plus 3 sine 25, close the bracket around the angle, then close the overall bracket, and then cubed. So that gives us 21.9506751818. Question 4. Solve the simultaneous equations. So to solve simultaneous equations, we're going to either make the x's the same or the y's the same. To eliminate one of them, so if I multiply the top one by 7 and the bottom one by 2, we're going to make the x's the same and we can eliminate the x's. So, whole top line times 7, so that's 14x plus 35y equals 14. And the whole bottom line multiplied by 2, so 14x minus 8y equals negative 2. So I'm going to get rid of the 14x's. To get rid of them, I'm going to do 14x take away 14x, which will give me 0. So I'm going to take away the two equations. 14x take away 14x is nothing. 35y take away minus 8y is 43y. And 14 take away minus 2 is 16. So now I'm going to divide both sides by 43. So y is going to be 16 over 43. That doesn't simplify. So I'm going to leave it as 16 over 43. And I'm going to substitute it into one of the top equations to find x. So if I go for the top line, I've got two x's plus 5 times 16 over 43 equals 2. So let's grab the calculator. So I had 16 over 43, which didn't simplify. Now I'm going to multiply it by 5, which is 80 over 43. So I've got 2x plus 80 over 43 equals two. So now I'm going to do two take away my answer to get 2x by itself. So two take away answer is 6 over 43. So 2x is 6 over 43. So x must be half of that, which is 3 over 43. So I've got x's 3 over 43, 
and y as 16 over 43. Question 5. A is the point with coordinates 3, 8. B is the point with coordinates x, 13. The gradient of AB is 2.5. Work out the value of x. So I know that the gradient m is the change in the y, y2 minus y1, divided by the change in the x, x2 minus x1. So let's call these x1, y1 and x2, y2 and substitute them in. So 2.5 equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 2.5 equals 5 over x minus 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 3. So I'm going to get 2.5 times x minus 3 equals 5. And then divide both sides by 2.5. So x minus 3, 5 over 2.5 is 2. Add then plus 3 to both sides, so x is equal to 3. Question 6. Olivia is going to invest some money for 5 years. She can choose from two options. Investment A is 2.7% compound interest per year and investment B 2.8% simple interest per year. Which invest investment should Olivia choose? So we haven't been given an amount of money to start with so we can just call it 100 pounds or 100%. So let's start with 100. So investment A, if we start with 100, we start with 100% and we're going to add on 2.7% each year for investment A. So to add on 2.7%, I'm going to multiply by 1.027 and we're going to have 5 years. So I'm going to add on 2.7% 5 times. So for investment A, got 100 times 1.027 to the power of 5. So that's 114.25. 114.25. So that's a 14.25% increase. How about investment B? So simple interest means we get the same amount of interest every year. So we get 2.8% of whatever we started with each year. So the interest doesn't change. So we're going to get 2.8% five times, which means we're going to have a 14% increase. So with investment A, we're going to get a 14.25% increase. With investment B, we're going to get a 14% increase. So we should pick investment A. Question 7. The exchange rate in London is one pound equals one dollar thirty one. So one pound would get you one dollar thirty one. The exchange rate in New York is one dollar gets you seventy nine p. And Bernie wants to change some pounds into dollars. In which city will he get the most dollars? So we know that one pound in London 
gets you $1.31. We don't know what one pound gets you in New York. So let's work that out. So we know $1 gets you 79p. How do we work out what one pound gets you? We're going to divide both sides by 0 0.79. Because 0 0.79 divided by 0 0.79 is 1. So any number divided by itself gives you 1. And we're going to do 1 divided by 0 0.79. And that's going to give us two decimal places, 1.27. So that's in New York. So one pound gets us $1.27 in New York. But in London, one pound gets us... $1.31. So where do we get more dollars? We get more dollars in London. Question 8. Each year Rose buys an annual ticket for his train journey to work. The price of Rose's ticket increased by 2% in 2017 and 3% in 2018. The ticket costs £2,534 in 2018. What was the price in 2016? So we had our price in 2016. Let's call that X. We added on 2%. And then we added on 3% to that new price. And that got us 2,534. So we want to know what this original price was. So we're going to, to get rid of these times is, we're going to divide. So our original price is going to be 2,534 divided by 1.02 times 1.03 and that gives us 2411 pounds 96 Question 9. Last year, Patrick paid £2,534 for his annual train ticket. This year, he has to pay £2,612. Work out the percentage increase. Give your answer to three significant figures. So the percentage increase is going to be the change over the original times 100. So how much has it gone up? That's 2612 take away 2534. Over the original, which was 2534 times 100. So I'm just going to type this into the calculator. 2612 take away 2534 divided by 2534 times 100 and that gives us 3.08 percent question 10 two regular polygons p and q have a common side as shown in the diagram so P and Q have got a regular side, a common side even. They share one side. Polygon P has N sides. Polygon Q has twice as many sides. So 2N. Find the size of angle X in terms of N. 
So angle X is the exterior angle of polygon P plus the exterior angle of polygon Q. So the exterior angle of P, to find an exterior angle of a regular polygon, we do 360 divided by the number of sides. So for polygon P, it's 360 over N. For polygon Q, 360 over 2N. So this angle is 360 over N. This one's 360 over 2N. So X is equal to 360 over 2N plus 360 over N. So we can simplify this answer. If we half top and bottom of our first fraction, that's 180 over N. So we've got 180 over N plus 360 over N. We've got the common denominator already. We just add the tops. 180 plus 360 is 540. So our angle X is 540 divide, divided by N, 540 over N. Question 11. Liquid A has a density of 2.5 grams per centimetre cubed, 150 centimetres cubed of liquid A is mixed with some liquid, some of liquid B to make liquid C. So liquid A and liquid B are mixed together to make C. C has a mass of 210 grams and a density of 1.12 grams per centimetre cubed find the density of liquid B. So we need to know that density is equal to mass over volume. So we know for liquid A, we know the density and the volume. And we know for liquid C, the mass and the density. So for liquid A, we need to work out the mass. So for A, we're going to work out mass by doing density times volume. So the density is 1.2. The volume is 150. So we're going to do 1.2 times 150 which gives us 180 grams. And for C, we know the mass and the density, so we can work out the volume. And that is mass divided by density. So the mass is 210. And the density is 1.12. So 210 over 1.12 is 187.5 centimeters cubed. So now we know all of the information for A and all of the information for C, but we need to know about B. So we can work out the mass. Well, we know that A and B added together make C. So to find out the mass and the volume of B, we can do C take away A. So for B, the mass is going to be the mass of C, 210, take away the mass of A, 180, which is 30 grams. And for the volume, it's going to be the volume of C, which is 187.5. Take away the volume of A, which was 150. 
So the volume is 37.5 centimetres cubed. So finally, density is mass over volume. So that's 30 over 37.5. which is four fifths or 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 grams per centimeter cubed. Question 12. Emma has a bag containing a large number of beads. She wants to find an estimate for the number of beads in the bag. Emma takes a sample of 50 beads from the bag and marks each bead with a black cross and then puts the beads back in the bag. She shakes the bag and takes another sample of 50 beads. Six of these have been marked with a black cross. Work out an estimate for the total number of beads in the bag. So we know six out of 50 have got a black cross and 50 out of the total have got a black cross so it's a equivalent fraction so six out of 50 must be equal to 50 out of the total so 50 out of the total have got a black cross and six out of 50 have got a black cross so we're going to work out what x is so whatever we multiply 6 by to get 50 will be the same as what we multiply 50 by to get the total number of beads. So if we do 50 divided by 6, that's 8.3 recurring. So 50 divided by 6 is 8.3 recurring. So we're going to do 50 times 8.3 recurring to find the number of beads. And that gives us 416.6 recurring. So to the nearest bead, that's 417. But 416.6 recurring, but to the nearest bead, that's 417 beads. Question 13. A radioactive substance decays by X percent each day. After eight days, half the substance has decayed. Find the value of X. So... We started off with 100%. We multiplied it by something eight times. And we've now got 50% left. So we had 100%. We multiplied it by a number eight times. And we've now got 50% left. So... Our number to the power of 8, 50 over 100, is 0 0.5. So what number to the power of 8 is 0 0.5? So we're going to do the 8th root of 0 0.5. So I've got 0 0.9170. So, so y is equal to 0 0.9170. So that's our multiplier. So 
what percentage is this decrease? So 1 minus the answer. is 0 0.083 times 100 to change it to a percentage so that's 8.3 8 8.3 percent so 1 minus the answer times 100 8.3 percent or just 8.3 as the value of x. Question 14, expand and simplify. So we're expanding triple brackets. So we're going to leave one of them and expand the other two to start with. So if I leave the first one and expand the second two, so x times x, is x squared, x times negative 4, negative 4x, 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So I've got collecting like terms of the second bracket, negative 4x plus 3x is negative 1x, and expanding again, so x times all of the terms in the second bracket and five times all of the terms in the second bracket. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative x is negative x squared. x times negative 12 is negative 12x. 5 times x squared is 5x squared. 5 times negative x is negative 5x. And 5 times negative 12 is negative 60. So collecting like terms, I've got x cubed I've got 5x squared, take away 1x squared, so 4x squared. I've got minus 12x, take away another 5x, so minus 17x, and I've got minus 60 on the end. Solve 3x squared minus 5x minus 7 equals 0. Give your answers correct, give your solutions correct to three significant figures. So it's a quadratic formula question. So x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So a is 3, b is negative 5, c is negative 7. And we're just going to substitute these in. So we've got minus, minus 5 plus or minus the square root of minus 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times minus 7 all over 2 3s. So we're going to type this into the calculator. Fraction button first. We're just going to use plus the first time and then change it to a minus for the second answer. So we've got minus minus 5 plus the square root of minus 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times minus 7 over 2 3s. So we've got our first answer of 2.57 to three significant figures. Or if we use a negative, so clicking back into it, changing the plus to a minus, and to three significant figures, that's minus 0 0.907. So there are my solutions. Question 15. So triangle A, which we've been given, is reflected in the line Y equals minus X to give triangle B. 
So the line y equals minus x is this line. So I will extend that. So there's the line y equals minus x. I'm reflecting triangle A in that. So from each point, I'm going to go how far am I away? The perpendicular distance from the line. So one, two and a half. So half, one, two. This top point, one, two, three, four, five and a half. So half, one, two, three, four, five. And last one, one, two, three and a half, half, one, two, three. So there we've got our triangle B. And then we're going to reflect in the line x equals minus 2 to give triangle C. That's minus 3. So the line x equals minus 2. And we're reflecting B, so it's 2 away for this top point, so 2 away on the other side. 2 away, 2 away, and 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 6. So this is our triangle C now. So we've got triangle C reflected, and we need to describe the single transformation which maps A onto C. So how do we get from A to C in one transformation? So that is, it's a rotation of 90 degrees clockwise, and the center of rotation will be where these two lines intersect. So it's a rotation, 90 degrees clockwise, And the center is at minus 2, 2. Question 16. Prove algebraically the recurring decimal 0 0.315 recurring can be written as 35 over 111. So we've got 0 0.351 all recurring. We're going to call that x. And we need something else that ends in 351 recurring. So if we multiply by 1000, we're going to have 315.351 recurring. So we're going to call that 1000x. And if we do the bottom one, take away the top one, 1000x is take away 1x is 999x. And 315 point something, take away 0 point, the same something, is 315. So now we divide both sides by 999. So x is 315 over 999. And that should simplify to 35 over 111. Question 17. Here are the first five terms of a quadratic sequence. Find an expression in terms of n for the nth term of this sequence. So we know our sequence. The first difference is 6, then 11, then 16, then 21. And the second difference is 5, 5, 5. So the second difference is the same. 
So we know it's a quadratic sequence. We were told that anyway. So it's in the form an squared plus bn plus c. And we can remember that the second difference is 2a. The difference between the first and second terms is 3a plus a b. And the first term is a plus b plus c. So 2a equals 5. So a must be 5 over 2, or 2.5. 3a plus b equals 6. So 3 2.5s, a is 2.5, plus b equals 6. So 7.5 plus b equals 6. So take away 7.5 from both sides. b is minus 1.5. And a plus b plus c equals 5. So 2.5 minus 1.5 plus c equals 5. So that's 1 plus c equals 5. One plus c equals 5. So c is 4. So we've got 2.5n squared minus 1.5n plus 4. And I can check my answer. So if I substitute 5 in, I should get 59. So let's do that. So if I've got 2.5 times 5 squared minus 1.5 times 5 plus 4, I get 59, so I know that this is correct. Question 18. The table shows information about the weight of 60 pigs. So we've got the weight and frequency in a table, and we're being asked to draw a histogram. So for a histogram, the area of the bar is the frequency, and going up the side of our graph our histogram is going to be frequency density so we know the width of each bar so there's weight in kilograms we know how wide each bar is because 60 to 75 is 15 75 to 85 is 10 85 to 90 is 5 wide and 90 to 110 is going to be 20 wide so that's the width. We know the area, which is the frequency, and frequency density, the height, is going to be frequency divided by class width. So 9 divided by 15 for the first bar. So 9 divided by 15, that's going to be 0 0.6. 16 divided by 10, which is 1.6. 25 divided by 5, which is 5, and 10 divided by 20, which is 0 0.5. So our frequency density has to go up to 5. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And our weights is going to start at 60 and go up to 110. It's going to be 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. So the first bar is from 60 to 75 and goes up to 0 0.6. So 60 to 75 and goes up to 0 0.6. The second bar is 75 to 85 and goes up to 1.6. So 75 up to 85 and goes up to 1.6. 
Then we're from 85 to 90, up to 5. And 90 to 110, up to 0 0.5. So there is our histogram. Part B, find an estimate for the median. So we've got 60 pigs. So the median is where we're going to split it. So we've got 30 on each side. So we've got 9, 16, 25, 10. So we need 30 on both sides. So we've got 25 up to here and so we need another five so we need to split this bar so we've got five on the left and 20 on the right so it was five wide to start with so each little one across one one across five tall so each one is five. So this is now five in the small bit and 20 in the big bit. Four times five makes 20. One times five makes five. So our median is where the purple line is, which splits it. So we've got 30 on each side. So it's at 86 kilograms. Question 19. So we've got a triangle ABC. The area of the triangle is 21 meters squared. Calculate the perimeter. So we know the area of a triangle, a non right angle triangle, any triangle. So we know area is equal to half AB sine C. So area is 21 so we're going to work out this angle first and then we're going to use this angle and the cosine rule to find the other length so there's going to be two steps we're going to find the length bc no find the angle x and then use the angle x to find the length bc so area is half a b sine c so 21 is half times 5.7 times 8.4 sine x. So we're going to say sine x is equal to 21 over half times 5.7 times 8.4. So to get rid of this times, we're going to do a divide. So let's grab the calculator. Let's have 21 over um, half times 5.7 times 8.4. So that's 50 over 57, which is absolutely fine. So 50 over 57 is sine x. So x is arc sign shift sign 50 over 57 so shift sign answer so we know x is 61.3 and we're going to keep this number in the calculator 61.3 But keep that in the calculator because we're going to use it again because now we're going to work out bc using the cosine rule so we're going to have big a little a and b and c any way around so a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a put room below so we'll work out down here so 
a squared, which is what we're working out, equals b squared, which is either 5.7 or, or 8.4. So 5, no, 8.4 squared plus 5.7 squared minus 2 times 8.4 times 5.7 cos 61.3. So we can type this in the calculator. We can type the whole thing in the calculator for a squared. So we've got 8.4 squared plus 5.7 squared minus 2 times 8.4 times 5.7 cos. And we've still got the last answer in the calculator. So I'm going to use the answer button. So I've got 57.07, so a squared is 57.07. I'm going to square root the answer, which is 7.55. So I've got 7.55. I wanted to work out the perimeter, so I'm going to have my answer plus 5.7 plus 8.4. And I've got 21.7 to one decimal place. Question 20. Show that the equation x cubed minus 4x squared plus 1 equals 0 has a solution between x equals 3 and x equals 4. So we're going to substitute 3 in, substitute 4 in, and we should get a change of sign, which will mean that the solution is between these two values. So let's do 3 cubed minus 4 times 3 squared plus 1. which is negative 8. And then let's change the 3 to a 4. And we get positive 1. So we've got a change of sign. Therefore, there is a solution between x is 3 and x is 4. Part B. Show that the equation x cubed minus 4x squared plus 1 equals 0 can be rearranged to give x equals the cube root of 4x squared minus 1. So if we plus 4x squared to both sides... We get x cubed plus 1 equals 4x squared. Subtract 1 from both sides. So x cubed is 4x squared minus 1. And cube root we get our answer. Part C. Starting with x0 equals 4, use the iteration formula xm plus 1 equals the cube root of 4 times xn squared minus 1. To find the value of x2, give your answer to three decimal places. So we're going to substitute in to find x1 first. So x1, so when n is 0, x1 equals the cube root of 4 times x0 which is 4 squared minus 1. So that's the cube root of 4 times 4 squared minus 1. So x1 
is 3.979. And then we're going to find x2 by doing the cube root of 4 times our last answer squared minus 1. So we're going to change that 4 we had to our last answer. And to three decimal places, I've got 3.965. Question 21. So we've got a bounds question. By considering bounds, work out the value of f to a suitable degree of accuracy. Give a reason for your answer. So we're going to work out the upper bound for f and the lower bound for f and see what they both round to. So, so g, let's start with g. So it's 12.5 to three significant figures. So 12.6 is the next one up. 12.5. Four is the one down. So the lower bound is halfway between 12.4 and 12.5, which is 12.45. And the upper bound, halfway between 12.5 and 12.6, which is 12.55. And for H, we're 15.02 to four significant figures. So the one up's 15.03, the one down's 15.01. So the lower bound, halfway between 15.01 and 15.02 is 15.015. And the upper bound, 15.025. So we want the upper F, which is going to be the square root of upper G divided by lower H. And we want the lower bound for F, which is going to be the square root of lower G divided by upper H. So the square root of upper G is square root 12.55 divided by the lower h, 15.015. And for lower f, it's going to be square root 12.45 divided by 15.025. So we're just going to type these in the calculator now and see what they both round to. So for the upper f first, 12.55 square rooted over 15.015. So I've got 0 0.2359, four decimal places should do, so 0 0.2359. And for the other one, so that was a 2.5 on the bottom and a 4.5 on the top. So 0 0.2348. Okay, so how many decimal places can I round both of them to? So they're not the same to four decimal places. To three decimal places, I've got 0 0.236 and 0 0.235, so they're not the same. To two decimal places, I've got 0 0.24 and 0 0.23, so they're not the same. But to one decimal place, I've got 0 0.2. So let's say it's 0 0.2 to one decimal place, and they both round to 0 0.2 to one decimal place.
Okay, question 22. On the graph, draw a sketch of y equals cos x plus 90 minus 1 for 0 to 360 degrees. So we need to know the original cos graph, which you can draw in pencil. So the original cos graph starts at 1, goes through 90, 0, 180 minus 1, 270, 0, and 361. So the original cos graph looks something like that. And we are moving it, so we're shifting it. So it says plus 90 in the bracket. So in the bracket changes the x, and it does the opposite to what it says. So we're going to shift it 90 to the left. So it says plus 90, so we're going to take 90 off. So we're shifting it 90 to the left, and outside the bracket changes the y and it does what it's told and one down so we're shifting all of these points 90 to the left and one down so this point here goes 90 to the left and then one down so 180 minus 1 90 to the left and one down 90 0 90 to the left and one down. I missed a point, so 270, 0, 90 to the left, and 1 down. So we're going to get our new wave, which I'm going to rub out the original one. And our new wave is going to look like this. And remember we've got a calculator so we can substitute values in. So if I didn't know what 360 was going to be, I can do cos 360 plus 90 minus 1. And so 360 for x gives minus 1 for y. Part B. Sketch the graph of x squared plus y squared equals 1.96. So when we've got x squared and y squared, we've got a circle. And the equation of a circle with centre at the origin is x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. So 1.96 is the radius squared. So the radius is the square root of 1.96, which is 1.4. So we've got a circle center at the origin with a radius of 1.4. So we'll grab our compass. We're going to put it on the center. And we're going to draw a circle. With the center at the origin. And the radius is going to be 1.4. So we're going to have 1.4, 1.4, and minus 1.4, and minus 1.4. And there is our circle.